Hey, it's Ben here, and here in this video, we're going to have a look at a few different ways in which you can save or move an introductory animation that you might be using on your YouTube videos or other videos so that you can reuse it within Final Cut Pro. Now, the first method we're going to have a look at is basically exporting out a video with some transparency in it. So, for instance, if you have a title animation such as this, then you may want to remove the video in the background but keep that animated banner and logo over the top. So, we're going to use this as our first example of this section that we're going to export. So the first thing we want to do is come up to our project timeline in the library at the top left here. And we're essentially going to highlight this so you should see a yellow border around it. And we're going to come into the project and make sure for this example that we are working in the Apple ProRes 4444 rendering option. Now what this is going to mean is that when we turn off those background layers and then export it out, we're going to keep that transparency of this layer. So in order to actually turn off these background layers, we're just going to highlight the adjustment layer that won't be really any use within a, an exported video. And then I'm going to tap the V key and that will disable all those clips. So now what I want to do is highlight this clip and I'm just going to press X, which is actually going to highlight that range. So you can see the difference between highlighting the clip, which is what we use to copy or paste it or move it around or drag it around. And when we press X on that clip, it actually gives it a range selection. So we get these extra little handles at the left and right. And what that means is when we go to export it, it's actually going to export out just that range of our video. So I'm going to come to my share button at the top right here. And we're going to share out a master file. And we just want to check a couple settings here when we do this. So you can see the video is the animation on that black background, which will be transparent once we've finished exporting it out. And then in the settings, we're going to make sure that we're not using this H.264 codec. We want to use the same Apple ProRes 4444 codec, which means the file is going to be a bit bigger, but it also means that it will retain that transparency and quality as well. So I'm going to hit next here. So we're going to export this out here. We're going to call this banner intro video with transparency. We'll save that. And you may notice that when you're exporting with this method, the export takes a little bit longer. So you can see I'm sharing that video there. It's 4K and it's got that transparency and also the animation in it. So we'll just wait for that to export. So now that that's finished exporting, we're going to come to the desktop where we exported it to. And you can see we've got this banner video with transparency. We'll drag that into this new imports event. So you can see now if we just come to a new project here, then with these new import, we can drop that down onto our timeline and it will keep that transparency. So it's that 4444 timeline setting and the ProRes 4444 that you're using as your export setting that is gonna allow you to keep that transparency. So the nice thing here now is that unlike when we originally had this placed on our previous timeline that we were looking at, and this is obviously a generator, so it's having to render out. So if you're working on an older laptop, then actually rendering this out, although it might take a little bit of time, will mean that you have a high quality version that you can just drop and kind of redrop onto any project. Then it's just a question of organizing your media so you have these elements ready to pull in. The other element that I had included in that previous timeline was on an adjustment layer. So I'll just show you how to do this, where I basically used an adjustment layer to do two things. One was to actually add a color adjustment. So we're just muting that color in the background so that the foreground stands out a bit more and then also adding a Gaussian blur. And I'd done some keyframing of that as well so that it faded in and faded out at the beginning and end using keyframing for the Gaussian blur and also keyframing for that color adjustment as well. So in order to set that up, we'll just shorten this and then we can come to the beginning here. I've got my adjustment layer selected, turn my blur up. So I'm gonna add a keyframe, just a short bit into my clip. I'll come back to the beginning of my clip and then I can drop the amount of blur down to zero. So it will sharpen up. And then I'll do the same for that color adjustment. So we were in the color settings here. Um, so I'm gonna add a keyframe up here for my color board and then come back to the beginning and then I will just basically type in zero for each of these values that I modified. And that will then at the beginning here mean that I fade in. We can copy and paste those adjustment layers from one clip to the next, but we can't 
include them in that exported video but it will still speed up your rendering process a little bit so we can do that at the end here too and this banner is from the new Brett FX banner titles plus that you can get from FX factory and again we'll add that keyframe and then come to the end and then we'll just come back one frame and we're gonna type in zeros for this and we'll do the same with our blur as well so we'll come just as that starts to animate out come to the end here and then drop the amount of blur back down to zero so we end up with that sharp image so here we have the fade in of the title and then at the end the fade out so working really nicely there to fade in and fade out those titles now the other way that we can do this obviously is simply to copy and paste onto the new project. So we can copy and paste from one project to another, and we can also copy and paste from one library to another. So even if we're using this particular library, we could make a new library and then copy and paste it into there. The things we obviously lose with this method of exporting out the video in our new imports is that we can't change the type or anything like that. So this is really something you would do if you had a project where you knew you were gonna be using and reusing this particular short animation over and over again. So let's come back and we'll have a look at another method of doing this. So we've got also at the end of this video, we'll just turn the background layer back on here. So just tapping V again to turn that back on. And you can see we've got this animation, a few different banners popping up. And what's different about this section is that we have these layers in here as well. So you can see we could also export this out as a video, but I wanted to look at a couple different ways in which we can move this from one clip to the next. So if we select all of these and we're deliberately gonna dodge this adjustment layer for the moment, we'll copy this and we'll come to our next timeline, so our blank timeline, and I'm gonna paste this in. So we can copy and paste all those layers from one timeline to another. That's a really common way that I'm moving these types of titles from one project timeline to another project timeline, even if they're in different libraries. And you can see it works super easily. The graphics will move across to your new library if you are moving them from one library to another. And this works really well. And the main difference between doing these two methods is that with this first method, we kind of lose that editability, but we gain a bit in speed of rendering. And in the second method, we keep the editability so we can obviously modify any of these generator elements, the type here, the logo, and, and move things around if we need to. But we, again, it will take a little bit longer to render, depending on your system, that may be an issue or not. So let's have a look at one last method of actually moving these kind of intro or outro titles across. So we'll just delete those layers. And the other way is that if we select all of these, and again, avoiding the, the adjustment layer, I'm gonna to go to File, New, and Compound Clip. And what this will do is it will wrap up this outro animation. And I'm gonna put this into the new import event. It will wrap this up into a compound clip. So essentially what that means is, instead of all having all those layers to copy, we can simply select this, copy it, and then move to our new timeline and paste it in. So you can see the animation works really nicely and it's obviously easier to move that single layer rather than those multiple layers around in Final Cut Pro. Now, if we do need to go in and edit these, even if we move these to a new library, we can always double click into the compound clip and modify any of that text or those graphics that we have within that compound clip. And that will then update in the project timeline here. So one more word about these different layers that we're working with, and that is about these adjustment layers. So I've set up this adjustment layer to fade and blur a little bit. And then again to fade and blur back to the regular color. And we can copy this too. So the nice thing here is if we hold down the Option key or the Alt key and drag this across and stretch this out, I'm gonna right click here and go to show video animation. So we have those two bits of animation, one for the blur and one for the color adjustment. I can drag those keyframes back to the end. So I've got the beginning and end of my kind of outro animation here. And you can see quite quickly, I don't have to go into all those color settings again and reset it up. I can just move those 
keyframes at the beginning or keyframes at the end to get it to fit the length. Obviously, if we're shortening this for another one, then we might need to move those keyframes before we shorten it so that we don't kind of lose that visibility of the keyframes. I'm gonna click the cross here by video animation. So now we've moved those keyframes, we can have a look at this again. You can see, really easy to kind of set that layer up um, so that we get that nice contrast between the graphics and uh, kind of push the video back, mute the video in the background a little bit. And then we fade back into the regular video. So there's a couple of tips of how to create reusable elements for your YouTube videos or other videos that you're working on and also how to work with those adjustment layers to get that nice contrast between those graphic elements that you're overlaying, that little bit of subtle blur, just to make those graphics pop when you're creating your next videos in Final Cut Pro. Hopefully this is useful, and if you have any questions, then do leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.